Mikey Lynch and I'm an accountant. And in this series from ACCA, I'm sitting down with some other accountants and people who work in finance to lift the lid on some of the common myths you might have fallen for about this awesome career path. In this episode, we're looking at one of the core questions people tend to have about these jobs. Isn't accounting and finance basically just maths? Do you need to be a maths genius? And can you make a career in accounting without a maths degree? Let's find out. This is By All Accounts. Our maths. For some of us, just the words can send a shiver down the spine. Conjuring memories of school and protractors and calculators and quadratic equations. But do you need to be one of those to progress in careers that involve some numbers? So I found two people who currently work in accounting and finance to ask, do you need a maths degree to enjoy these jobs? First up, Carl Simpson. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And Ben Kieran. Hello. Hello. Thanks for having us. So what do you think? Carl, I'm going to come to you first. Do you need to be amazing at maths to work in accounting and finance? Um, I don't think so, because I, I'm just exactly opposite of amazing at math. Um, if I look back my school days, I never liked particularly um, math. I mean, I, there are a few subjects I like, but I generally never like got interested in math. And my um, school grades were kind of reflective of that. And when I was studying um, accountancy, I didn't really feel that there was a overall huge area where um, you need very technical math skill. Like it's plus, minus, uh, multiply, divide. That's kind of the basic principles I had. But that got me um, through all the exams I needed to pass to be qualified. So I don't really think um, it's essential to have like extensive uh, math knowledge to become an accountant. That's really encouraging to hear, particularly for, for those who perhaps maths isn't their favourite subject. Ben, can we come to you with the same question? Do you think you need to be amazing at maths to work in accounting and finance? Um, so I'm quite the opposite to Kyle there. Of I was always into my maths in school. Um, when I started doing my accounting exams, I always thought that there was quite a big maths implication on it. I was actually quite upset by the time I came to qualifying because there's not really that much complicated maths in there. So I think that that is very much one of the things that all the way throughout, everyone's always like, oh, you've got to do loads of maths. It's very maths based. It's You deal with a lot of numbers, but it's more about the trends and the patterns and the numbers than it is with actually messing around with them and doing complicated maths. So coming from a different viewpoint there, but you're kind of landing in the same place, a similar conclusion that... There isn't too much maths. There is some maths and it is helpful, but there's not there's not perhaps too much or uh, as you may have expected going in from the outset. So I'd like to come back to you. Can we ask what your what your job is? What do you do? Um, I'm uh, currently working as a finance manager at an all through school um, in Northumberland. So I work with um, one finance officer, but basically responsible for everything to do with school finance from um, financial reporting all the way to a petty cash expense claim, those more sort of administrative tasks. So um, it just involves day-to-day school life plus a bit of technical finance skills um, as and when I need to do sort of reportings. But it also has a lot of like um, managerial um, tasks um, to run the school from business perspective while principals are focused on um, education side of it. That's quite a lot of numbers for someone who... Uh, admitted from the outset that that numbers weren't really their bag <laughs> if you will um do you have a maths degree i don't have any degree you don't have a degree but you've you've gone through your accountancy training are you qualified yes yes i am um i well actually i dropped out of high school which is like equivalent secondary school in the uk um and i took an exam to be equivalent of high school graduate so that's Technically, like as a formal education, that's my final education. And in that, my math score was, the pass mark was 50 for each subject um, and maximum score was 100. And on average, I got something like 88.5 across all subjects on average. But there was a one subject that um, brought the score down. That was math. And I got 50 out of 100. And that was just literally passing mark. So that's still my, a pass. Yeah, still a pass. But that's my like latest um, former education to do with math, but I managed to um, start accountancy training and managed to pass. But well, there were a few um, challenges, but eventually I managed to pass all of them and become qualified two years ago. Congratulations! Thank and we'll you. come back to a little bit of that that journey um, with your accountancy training. But 
you were able to start that accountancy training without having a degree or without having um, another qualification to get you there? Yes, um, there was a slightly different pathway when I started. Effectively, it's exactly the same training as if you start the full ACCA qualification. Mm -hmm. But for those people who didn't have a um, sort of entry qualification, so effectively, um, even though it was a slightly different way around, I could start my jo ACCA journey without any more formal qualification. That's, I, I, I love that. And I'm aware of that as well, that we are one of the professions where you can come in without having a degree and you can still move through and get that chartered status. But you build that foundation without that being a degree or without that being A-levels. Ben, I want, to, I want to come to you and just ask you a very similar question. Um, can you tell me about your job? What do you do? Where do you work? Just a little bit about what you're up to. So currently I work at Crow Isle of Man. Um, I'm a client accountant. So, you know, we get books in, do a lot of debits and credits, lots of bank recs. Um, when you obviously get your big clients, do their, their bookkeeping as well on the side. Um, we deal with quite a lot of trust, quite a lot of uh, big companies as well. Most of the stuff that we do is normally Alaman based, which is normally a lot of investments. But then also there's quite a lot of stuff going on in the UK. Lovely. Um, you talked about loving maths. Do you have a maths degree? What's your, what's your background, your relationship with that? Um, so I did maths, further maths and physics as my A-levels. And then when it came to going to uni, I went to university to do a degree in maths and physics. I lasted for three weeks and then dropped out of uni. Um, then I started as a trainee auditor, did that for a bit. Then for multiple reasons, mainly that I wasn't mature enough to be working, I left. I went to then go do a second degree. This one was in accountancy, um, but it was on the Isle of Man where we don't have a specific university. We've got a college, which is then linked to the University of Chester. So with that, um, I was there for a year, then COVID hit. So from that, I then dropped out of that as well. And that's when I then started doing my ACCA training. So wow. I've not dropped out of one, but I've dropped out of two uni degrees and then I've still ended up becoming fully qualified. Uh, okay, so you, you're fully qualified. You're a chartered accountant as well. Yeah. Congratulations. I think that really shows that career paths are not just linear. When you, when you got that text message or that email that said you've you finished the qualification, you've passed all of your exams. How did you feel after, the, after such a, a meandering journey? It was brill. It was really nice to know that you've kind of, you've reached the end and there's a point whereby you, you never actually have to do anything again. If you did want to continue doing more qualifications and everything, you could do, but it would be entirely your call. However, having that ACCA stamp after your name just opens so many doors and it's one of those things that you have that, you're set for life and you're going to at least always have a comfortable life and you never have to really worry about getting a job. It was a really satisfying text to receive. And I want to come back over here, please, from Acar, and just ask you a similar question about when you got to the end of your studies, when you completed your studies and you got that text message, that email that said you have passed, how did you, how did you feel? Um, I, I think it, it took a while for me to, I mean, I immediately realized I did pass and it was very exciting, but to actually fill it in my day-to-day -day life, it took a while because at that time I was juggling um, a lot of things. I was um, buying new house. My daughter was newly born, moved to Newcastle um, while working for, at that time I was working as an um, IT auditor at a, one of the big four firms. So the work was quite busy as well and doing the last like professional stage papers while doing all of that. And it was really probably the, the most difficult time of my life. And then I was so relieved. One side excited, one side relieved. But as a, at the same time, it's quite hard to believe I finally did it. So it took me a while for a few weeks. And then I, I looked back and I realized, actually, I did pass. It's Everything's done and I've finished. Um, and as Ben said, I can now do whatever I want to do. It was definitely good the best moment of my life oh that's so fantastic to hear it really is just want to take you to to that journey so you're saying you're working as an IT auditor moving you've got your your baby yeah. you've got a lot going on Hi. maths also in the mix there how did you find studying for maths particularly as you're moving towards the latter stages of the qualification as someone who didn't have an initial love for maths how did you find the maths within within your studies I think if I use the example of our last last stage exams, like uh, the 
strategic level papers. I see like um, one was business study and the other was financial reporting. And I didn't feel like there was a lot of math involved in those two. And I feel like the only paper um, that really required a bit more advanced um, math knowledge was the financial manage, advanced financial management. But even then, um, I could kind of teach myself by um, searching on Google. It wasn't like a really, really advanced like university level of math. It was probably somewhere around the secondary school level of math. Um, it's just I happened to um, not study as, as far as um, some other students might have done because I dropped out of school. So for a lot of other students, it might be still within the like um, remit of what they studied at school. But even if it's not, um, I think it was um, not that complex enough that you could just learn as you go. So just just touching on some of what you said there, what skills do you feel have turned out to be most important to you working as an accountant? Um, I think one, well, I've got two actually, so it's not really most okay. important. <laughs> <laughs> that just comes in my mind. One is... Um, Professional skepticism, we, um, I think, hear about this a lot in audit paper. But I think as an accountant, um, in this kind of time when the technology is changing really fast and uh, the business process is changing, you know, every year by year, um, we see a lot of ways that we've done things um, that worked in the past, but maybe not quite um, the best way of doing going forward. Um, and professional by exercising professional skepticism, like this having mindset of always double checking are constructively challenging whether it's the best way or not um, that kind of provide opportunity for development whether, whether it is for the accountant like a personal development or whether it is for that workplace the, the company um, so that's I think one of the key skills and in line with that then if things are changing if I've asked the question is it the best way if it's not what's the best what's the way forward and if, if we know what's the way forward then the adaptability to be able to learn. And um, I think we have this requirement for continuing professional development. I love to hear an auditor talk about professional skepticism. That that rings true. And I, I think auditors will be very happy to hear that too. Um, and uh, I just want to ask about your career. Do you feel your career has turned out as you expected? Yes, in terms of direction, it did. Um, obviously, I didn't exactly thought about whether if I would end up being a um, uh, chartered accountant or auditor or a tech specialist, that specific area. But I did have the idea of um, studying accountancy. Um, and I decided that when I left Korean um, Navy, um, I did some navigation sort of things. And that had nothing to do with getting a job on land. Um, so when I left that job, um, I just started from scratch. And I met my wife um, back in South Korea. So when she wanted to come back here, I need to decide what am I going to do to make a living. And then I looked at what um, sort of things can I do without a degree, without much um, saving to start with. And that's where I saw accounting as the way forward because I looked at other professions and quite a few of them had barriers to entry. And accounting was one of the very few that didn't have barrier to entry and I also felt that accounting is kind of a core of any sort of organization whether if they're profit making or not or government but without money nothing really runs so it kind to me it gave me the idea that if I select if I choose to go become an accountant I can start as an accountant and there are so many other pathways that's available and whether if it's um, technical um, accounting like um, audit or tax or some other ways are more leaning towards uh, management if you are more interested in that side of um, business. So I think I'm heading towards where I want it to be. Um, I'm still exploring what's my next um, step of my career, but it, it's going toward the right direction. And I'm really happy that um, I could do that. I can do that because the passing ACCA qualification kind of opened the door, as Ben said, to be able to make choices that I want to do. It's exciting to hear you talking about the next step. So coming back to you, Ben, has it turned out as you expected? If you asked me when I was 18, no, it's very different to what I expected. Um, I did expect to go do 
a degree in math and physics, then probably go on, do a master's, potentially a doctorate, go on that route. Um, even then when I came back, I was accountancy was always my kind of my plan B. Both my parents were accountants, so it was it's in my blood. Um, so it was always something that it was always on the table. Um, so when I came back and then started that, but then I was in audit. I'm not an auditor. I did not enjoy that that side of it. Um, so then even then I still I still wanted to end up being an accountant, but I decided to start taking a different route towards it. That then didn't turn out, and then I started again doing accountancy. Um, but where I was working, I was essentially training up to end up being a teacher to then start training people to be accountants as well. Um, I then didn't like the idea of standing up in front of a classroom and teaching. So after I qualified, that's when I then went more into the the private sector and doing, well, doing it, people's accounts instead. Working with so, clients. Yeah. Lovely. What's your favorite bit? Uh, my favorite part about everything that I've I've done is the helping people side of it. So when I was working at the, the place where I qualified, um, going through MPES, all the tu- students would always come to us and they'd ask us for help. And being able to sit down with someone and go, right, I see that you're stressing out about something. Here's the way that you get around it. This is how we can help. And being able to put other people at ease and help people, that was that's always been my favorite bit. I always like, throughout everything, I've always been quite a social person. So that being able to to comfort someone and be able to make someone feel better in themselves that was always my favorite side of it. So just to bring it back to the topic of maths, do you think you need a maths degree to work in accounting and finance? No, oh, not at all. No, without a doubt, no. No, not at all. I agree. And if you could give advice to someone who's considering working in accounting and finance, considering that as their career path, what would that advice be? If it's someone who's in school, I'd say whilst you can, Make sure that you get out there, try and get some work experience, get a feel for what it's actually like to do the job, to see how it is, see if it is something that you like. And if it is something that you like, get started on it as soon as you can. The sooner you start it, the sooner you you finish it. And then the sooner you finish it, the sooner that all those doors open up and you can crack on with the rest of your life in, well, in such a brilliant way. Oh, any thoughts? Yeah, I absolutely agree. I think work experience is the most important thing to start with. And especially, um, because there are different pathways available where possible, um, I would encourage um, younger students to look look up for a lot of pathways that's available, especially with the um, graduate scheme or apprenticeship and that sort of thing. Depending on where you start, um, like a, which part of account, which area of accounting you start from, it might take some time to be able to switch to something else. It's always possible to switch between different um, roles in terms of accounting, but always better to know what you are where you are walking into and then know that you'll be reasonably happy with um why you can't 100 percent tell until you actually start the job i think that's such great advice from both of you getting that experience and just a bit of exposure to to what the work might entail i think is really key so that's it from this episode of by all accounts thank you carl and ben for joining me today for a link to watch the video version of this podcast check out the show notes With skills in accountancy and finance, you can work in any business, anywhere, and turn your passion into an exciting and rewarding career with an ACCA qualification. You can sign up to find out more by heading to accaglobal.com forward slash BU anywhere. That link is also in the show notes. See you next time. I'm Mikey Lynch, and this has been By All Accounts.